You know what really makes me mad? When somebody on YouTube goes to the trouble of making a, a demonstration video and then says something like, so this is how it's wired, and then the magic happens inside, and that powers the machine. So, yes, I'm guilty of that. And, honestly, the video I was making was just a basic overview of how the thing works. But, for this video, I want to get into what's happening in the switch, and to the motor. As I said in the last video, I'm not an electrician. However, I can figure this stuff out, given enough time, and um, the last video I made, just as a quick answer to a question, basically, and, and I really, at the time, didn't consider that um, there would be as much interest in there as there was in, um, in this thing actually working. So as you may or may not know, if you watched the last video, with my machine, all the wires are black. So it makes it, it made it a little bit difficult to determine what was going on and what's going where. And considering that you have a switch that has 12 terminals, it makes it even more interesting. So I took the time and and mapped it out, figured it out, and so let me show you how it is wired for my machine. So first of all, this is both sides of the switch. These switches have two sides. This is the in side or power inside. This side is the switching side. And it's outs go to the motor itself. And let me add a little bit up here. This is the block that is on my motor. And we're going to call this the pulley side of the block. We have four terminals for the four lines to come out of the switch side of the, the switch. This representation here as if we took the switch and opened it up and laid it flat. We filleted it basically. This is the top, and this is the top of the left and right sides. So, in this case, in this case, I say, because this is how mine is wired. Yours may be different, your switch may be different, your, it may be configured differently. But just as a, an example here, we're going to do the way mine is wired. And uh, probably a lot of you out there are going to have the exact same sort of thing. If you have this exact machine, it's kind of likely that you're going to have the same switch. We have a hot wire going to this terminal right here. And then that is jumpered to this terminal and that is jumpered to this terminal. And then we have a neutral wire which is represented in black here because I don't have white going to this terminal going to this terminal and to this terminal. So this is going to your to your outlet on the wall basically. Okay? Now, the reason I laid it out this way is because it's, it's much simpler in my head to look at these as layers, and that's why I diagrammed it this way. In just a little bit in the video, I'm going to go into more detail because I did actually do a 3D model of this. And so, between this version, between looking at it this way and looking at the 3D model, I think we'll get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. So, when you look at it with layers like this, you see that this layer, these two layers, are positive. These two are neutral. Okay? The same thing is basically going to happen on the other side except for some magic at the top. So, when you switch on your power to either side, doesn't matter, what you're doing is you're switching on this layer and this layer. So, dealing with the hot side first, when, you, when this side gets switched on, you get power to this terminal, from this terminal, and you either, depending on the position of the switch, get power from this terminal to this terminal or this terminal. On my machine, this terminal connects right there on the motor and again this is the pulley side now this is going to get a little bit scratchy but this will give you a wiring diagram 
um, the 3D model will show this a little bit more clearer because it'll be different colors. All right, so depending on whether or not your motor is in forward or reverse, is switched into forward or reverse, depends on which one of these go hot. On the, on the switched terminals, we'll deal with those in just a second. On the neutral side, this terminal is always neutral, whether or not it's in forward or reverse or lather milling. And that terminal goes up and to the first position on the motor. Now the actual switching begins. And let me just put this out there because I'm pretty sure this is what's happening. These terminals are your start circuit. They go to the start capacitor. They always are energized no matter which position the, the switch is in except for off, of course. They aren't energized when it's off. So, the other two wires, we'll put these in blue, that go to the motor, go here, from here to here, and here to here. So we have two terminals left, two hot terminals left, basically. So the magic happens in this, in this, this switching. This is, this is the key thing. You have a jumper that crosses from here, and a jumper that crosses to here. Okay? Depending on what position the, the, the switch is in, determines whether a hot is on this side or a hot is on this side. It also determines whether a, ne a neutral is on this side or this side, so that you are reversing these two lines. These are the only ones that get reversed. They're either going to be, one's going to be hot, the other one's going to be neutral, or this one's going to be hot, and this one's going to be neutral. That's how that happens. That's what this, this cross jumper is. So I've always been, you know, a real visual learner. I was always better at trigonometry, geometry, and calculus than I was in algebra, because algebra just seems to be abstract to me. And that's the reason I sort of went to the trouble of actually, to actually model this in a CAD program, so that I could then produce some technical drawings here. And um, let me just say that this particular technical drawing, um, I'm going to put a link to it just in case you want um, a template to use to map your own switch. I'm not going to put in the lines. I'm just going to put in, I'm just going to give you the template of the 12 position switch or 12 terminal switch. This is considered a three position 12 terminal switch. As part of that modeling and as part of me getting some practice on FreeCAD, um, also did a 3D model, and let's kind of take a look at that, and uh, I think you'll really be able to see there how that switching works. Okay, so here we have the switch. Now, this switch is in the off position. This is the top, and you see we have our power side coming in and the motor side going out, and if we switch over the load side or line side coming in, the hot side, that does this little jog right here with jumpers. Same thing on the neutral side does this jog with jumpers. You can see our different layers here. And you can think of these layers as kind of each one is its own switch. At least that's the way I like to think of it. And each terminal would be then be a point in that switch. So if we rotate here, if we can do this, gotta forgive me, I'm still learning the software a little bit. So Rotating is a little bit of a problem. But you can see our power layer is here. This is always on. One neutral layer that it originates from is always on when the switch is in the on position. In reverse or forward, those, those two are always on. And again, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but my I think that those are the, the start capacitor circuit. And then, of course, you wouldn't want to wire it this way because the wires are too close to the terminals, but it's just a visual representation of how these wires cross over. Uh, the blue and the green can be either. Now, let me take that back. This layer here is always going to be positive. Depending on the position of the switch, though, is which one of these terminals gets activated. So, therefore, the blue green or the blue 
uh, will be positive, will either be positive or neutral, depending on which one of these is accurate. How it becomes neutral is, again, on the other side. You see we have a terminal here for neutral. So if it's not activated as positive, it's got to be neutral. Again, we have our four wires going out to the motor. Clarify again, these two are always going to be on if the switch is on. Blue and the green wires can switch between positive and neutral. If one's neutral, the other one's positive or line, load, however you want to say it. So although it's not represented here, the ground occurs to the machine itself and to the, um, to the body of the motor. So basically that's it. I think this is a much, uh, this is about as easy as I could make it. I didn't have to go to the trouble of making this 3D model, but um, I think it really helps you kind of visualize what's going on and the significance of these layers. It's really much simpler to think of each one of these layers as their own sort of switch and how they're connected on the other side together, but they also in operate independently depending on the position of the switch. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, it helped me. This is something, you know, it's really good to know if you get a machine that needs to be rewired or you break some wires and you don't know where they go. It is a little difficult to measure these things when they're on the machine because you have so many jumpers going by. It's sort of hard to tell where wires are going, especially when they're not colored. And again, as I said, all my all my wires on my machine are black, and I don't know if it came from that came that way from the factory, or if um, it had been rewired in the past. I just I just don't know, but um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to determine when you've got wires running through your machine, whether they're actually you know where they where they originate. If if they're all black, it's kind of hard to tell, and you can sort of do that with. Um, with doing continuity testing, which is how I basically did a lot of this. But um, you also have to do some voltage tests because just because something is, um, because you have so many terminals here connected to one another, it's sort of difficult to determine where the continuity is originating, if you get my drift. Um, so you got to do, you also have to do some voltage checks to make, to see what's going on. Now, if you don't have your switch wired, it, and there's not all these jumpers that makes it a little bit more easy to see what's what's being switched on and what's being switched off um, but with it wired up and again I didn't want to unwire my machine for a video uh, that's you know a little bit beyond the pale but but um, I think we got a good representation of here of what's happening and um, how it works so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, expand a little bit more on my elect electrical knowledge and uh, hopefully it did on yours as well so we'll see you next time thanks bye